chapter 184 to leave and come back. Xiang Ming took a deep breath. Sui, I admit you're strong. Just now, we all misjudged you. As soon as he said this, his eyes flashed with cold light. But don't forget, this is Heaven's Origin Academy. If this incident gets any bigger, you won't get off lightly. Xing Weiao's heart clenched. It's true, this is Heaven's Origin Academy. If those old fogies see this, the consequences will be unimaginable. If you stop now, I guarantee to let today's incident go. Otherwise, Xiang Ming's gaze was icy. He left the rest unsaid, but the unspoken threat was already obvious. Sui walked towards him. Should I take this as a stubborn refusal to see the light? Xiang Ming's expression shifted, and he drew his sword with a clang. Sui shot forward like a bolt of lightning, appearing before Xiang Ming in a flash. His right hand swung, and... Whap! He slapped Xiang Ming right across the face, sending him staggering backward. He almost fell, and his handsome features were now swollen and red. You dare hit me? Xiang Ming's eyes bulged with shame and indignation. Whap! Yet another slap hit him right in the face. It was so forceful that this time, even his cheekbone caved in, and blood poured from his mouth and nose. His handsome face was now as swollen and red as a pig's. He fell into the dirt with a thud. An agonized wail escaped his lips, and his hair was in disarray. He was both frantic and furious, he dared not believe what was happening. Not far away, Jing Liao gasped. Xiang Ming. He was ranked in the top 10 amongst intersect disciples, with a late stage qi accumulation cultivation. He was a rare genius of the martial Dao, second to none. That combined with his status as the son of the provincial governor made him a dazzling figure within Heaven's Origin Academy, like the chosen son of Heaven. Yet now, he was more like a ball of clay, Su Yi could knead and squish him as he pleased. Xiang Ming couldn't even fight back. Even more terrifying, Su Yi didn't seem the least bit concerned about the potential consequences. What Heaven's Origin Academy? What son of the provincial governor? In his eyes, those were nothing but empty titles. Xing Weiao stirred up trouble with some regularity, that's why others saw her as a little witch. But now, even she felt her scalp turn numb, Su Yi's fearless and despotic methods shocked even her. Su Yi stood in front of Xiang Ming, then gazed down at him. Kneel properly. Xiang Ming rasped, Sui, you. Before he could finish his sentence, Sui grabbed him by the throat, lifted him into the air, then jammed him into the dirt like a wooden fence post. Bang! His knee slammed against the ground, he was now kneeling properly, like it or not. An indescribable sense of humiliation coursed through Xiang Ming's heart, and he was completely dumbstruck. Who was he? He was the glorious son of the provincial governor, the miraculous genius famed throughout Heaven's Origin Academy. Yet here he was, forced to kneel, his dignity in shambles. If I hadn't already agreed not to take your pathetic little lives, you'd already be dead, said Sui, cold and indifferent. Everything fell deathly silent. The suppressed Heaven's Origin Academy disciples slumped in dejection, looking desolate and pathetic. None of them dared utter a word. Xing Wuya watched his play out. All she could think was, fortunately, I didn't provoke Uncle Su back in the carriage. If I had, the consequences would definitely have been brutal. He's just too fierce. In all her years of life, she'd never seen anyone so scornful or despotic. He had a pride that seemed to look down upon everything, and his strength was simply unfathomable. Sui silently calculated the time. Fifteen minutes are only about half up. Suddenly, a startled voice exclaimed from not far away, this. Sui turned and saw Wen Ling Zhao, who'd left and come back. How is this possible? Irrepressible surprise rose on Wen Ling Zhao's icy features. Earlier, she left in a rage, but halfway to her destination, 
she heard the faint sounds of fighting off in the distance. For a moment, she stopped in place to strain her ears and listen. However, she was too far away. She could only hear the indistinct sounds of startled cries and uproar. Her first thought was I'm afraid Sui is getting beaten up. After all, this was Divine Firmament Peak, a place where inner sect disciples congregated. A whole group of them had witnessed Sui provoking her, it was hard to avoid them seeing Sui as their common enemy. This conclusion left Wen Ling Zhao feeling somewhat conflicted. Su Yi's earlier ignorant, brazen arrogance had left her incomparably enraged and disappointed. And yet, she found it hard to bear the thought of Su Yi getting beat up over it. Besides, they were nominally husband and wife. If Su Yi got beat up while she just stood back and watched, it would hurt her reputation. In the end, Wen Ling Zhao gnashed her teeth and went back. She could never, ever have guessed what scene would greet her upon her return. Her sect mates were either kneeling or sprawled out in the dirt. They were scattered across the ground, all of them looking miserable and pathetic as could be. She almost thought she was hallucinating. Especially when she saw the youth with the swollen face, caved-in cheekbone, and disheveled hair kneeling beside Sui. When she saw Xian Ming in this state, when Ling Zhao was dumbstruck, she was naturally well aware of how powerful Xian Ming's cultivation was, and she knew of his illustrious background. Even Heaven's Origin Academy's higher-ups dared not provoke Xian Ming lightly. Wen Ling Zhao would never have guessed someone would dare force the son of the provincial governor to kneel in such a humiliating manner. As for Su Yi, he was the only one without the slightest injury. For a while, Wen Ling Zhao just stood there, a bit flabbergasted. What? What exactly happened here? As if worried that Wen Ling Zhao would misunderstand, Jing Muiao chirped, Junior apprentice sister Ling Zhao, they insisted on making Uncle Su apologize to you, and they wouldn't let up. They kept provoking him too, and they decided to duel and force him to lower his head. The result? Well, you can see it for yourself. All of them have been forced to their knees, but you can't blame Uncle Su for this, they brought this upon themselves. Hu Jiao, Meng Tua, and the others all looked angry and ashamed, but they couldn't argue. Xiang Ming lowered his head, it seemed he didn't want Wen Ling Zhao to see his shameful appearance. How is this possible? Wen Ling Zhao looked a bit dazed. To the best of her knowledge, Su Yi had only recovered his cultivation about a month ago, in his greatest accomplishment since was taking first place in the Dragon's Gate Banquet. At the time, he was still just in the blood circulation realm. How had he grown so strong so quickly? This dealt an enormous shock to her perception of the world, and she found it hard to process all at once. Go find a piece of paper and a brush. Sui glanced at Jin Muyao, who jumped, then rushed off to do as she was told. Inwardly, her heart shook. Uncle Su really is dead set on retiring his wife. But when Wen Ling Zhao heard that, she immediately came to her senses, and her eyes bulged. Do you really think? That coming back means I've agreed to sign your divorce papers? You can see the situation here too, said Sui flatly. You ought to wake up and understand that no matter who shows up, no one can change my mind. He paused, then added, but of course, your 15 minutes isn't up yet. You still have time to think this over. Wen Ling Zhao took a deep breath, set aside her scattered thoughts, and said coldly, I can tell you right now. I shall resolve our marriage contract on our own, and there is absolutely no way I'll change my mind. Sui furrowed his brow, but only briefly. Fine. Since you're being so stubborn, I'll just write divorce papers on my own and be done with it. Don't you think you're being ridiculous? Wen Ling Zhao's tone was increasingly icy. Ridiculous? You say you're the victim of this marriage arrangement, but when you just left on our wedding night, did you even stop to think about how badly that would humiliate me? From that day forth, Hu and Guangling City didn't jeer at the sight of me. Wen Ling Zhao paused, then fell silent. Then, a year later, you came back with Wei Xingyang, 
someone who was my enemy during our time in Blue River Sword Manor. Don't you think that was over the line, said Su Yi, his eyes cold. When Ling Zhao furrowed her brow, I didn't know anything about the grudge between you two, and besides, there was nothing between us. If there really was something, I'm afraid neither of you would have lived to see this day, said Sui flatly. I respect your distaste for and rejection of this marriage contract, and I admire the effort you've put into escaping it. I cannot be bothered to pursue any past grievances with you any further, but today, we have to end this. He paused, then continued, once this is over, you can carry on as an inheritor of Heaven's Origin Academy, and you're welcome to accept the advances of any man you like. As for me, I can cast aside the status of live-in son-in-law. This will be good for both of us. When Ling Zhao couldn't help but let out a long sigh. If it were really that easy to resolve this, I would have eagerly agreed a long time ago. But the way I see it, your so-called contract is nothing but a worthless scrap of paper. It cannot change our arranged marriage in any way. She felt as if she was on the brink of going mad with rage. Does he seriously not understand the great Joe's laws surrounding live-in husbands? Or is he really ignorant of the fact that, unless the Jade Capital Sioux family nods their head, there's nothing anyone can do about our marriage contract? We are poorie.com, find us on Google. A decision I make is far more useful than any law of this mundane nation. If you don't believe me, you're welcome to test it for yourself, said Sui. But before he could continue, another voice boomed, like the low rumble of thunder. What's going on here? Why are all of you kneeling? A middle-aged man in brocade robes rushed over, his voice still echoing through the air. His hair whiskers were dark as ink, and his skin was fair. His presence was as steady as a mountain, calm and imposing. Two others trailed after him, an elder in Confucian robes and a wide belt, and a man with a long sword strapped to his back and long, willowy whiskers. Master. Xiang Ming was instantly excited, like he'd caught sight of his last hope. The other kneeling youths were initially stunned, but then, their faces lit up with delight. The middle-aged man in brocade robes was Xiang Ming's master, whom he respected greatly. His name was Wang Jianchong, and he was one of Heaven's Origins Academy's Vice Palace Masters, a peak third-level Marshal Dao Grandmaster. Greetings, Marshal Uncle Wang. Wen Ling Zhao was instantly solemn. She awoke from her mad fury and greeted him with a nod. Wang Jianchong nodded back, his expression dark. When he saw that Xiang Ming and the others were still just kneeling there, he couldn't help but roar, why aren't you standing up? They reacted as if awakening from a dream. All of them rose, one after another. Sui made no attempt to stop them. A bunch of small fries, that's all. They weren't worth the trouble. Now, who is going to tell me what exactly is going on here, said Wang Jianchong his gaze cold and crackling with electricity as he stared intently at Sui. The men beside him, the elder in Confucian robes and the whiskered swordsman, both glared at Sui icily. They might not know what exactly had happened, but how could they fail to realize that it was Sui who'd forced Xiang Ming and the others to kneel? Sui just stood there, hands behind his back, ignoring Wang Jianchong and his companions. Instead, he stared off into the distance. Xing Muya was already on her way back, and she was carrying brushes, paper, ink, and ink stones. Sui's faintly knit brow finally relaxed. Chapter 185 Whacking a Grandmaster to Death Xiang Ming said nothing. He'd been so thoroughly humiliated that he truly found it hard to even open his mouth. He glanced over at Tian Dong, who instantly understood. His expression filled with grief and righteous indignation as he said, Uncle Master Wang, this person is called Sui. He charged into our divine firmament peak and offended junior apprentice sister Wen Ling Zhao. We couldn't repress our anger, so we told him to apologize. Who would have thought he was so vicious and unbridled? One vehement statement, and he effectively transformed their provocation into a righteous act. Sui. 
meanwhile, became nothing but a thug on a mad rampage. The others chimed in too, one after another. Sui had just forced them to their knees, they no longer had any face left, and their anger had gone to their heads. Now that their seniors were present, who among them didn't want to avenge this grudge? When Lin Ling Zhao heard this, her delicate eyebrows knit together. However, she hadn't witnessed any of this for herself, so she wasn't really in a position to say anything. Wang Jianchong and his two companions' expressions instantly grew even darker. It was then that Jing Muya walked over. First, she passed Sui the paper and writing implements she was carrying. Then, she turned and faced her sect mates in a huff. Tang Dong, don't you have any shame? Do you dare say that again to my face? I. Tian Dong's expression froze. But before he could open his mouth, Jin Liao turned toward Wang Jianchong and clasped her fist in greeting. Uncle Master Wang, I saw everything that happened just now. It wasn't at all like Tang Dong said. She then went on to explain everything that had happened. Throughout this process, Xiang Ming, Tian Dong, and the others' expressions changed radically, and their hearts filled with unspoken resentment. They wouldn't have guessed that Jing Muyao would disregard their bond as setmates for Sui's sake. Just as they started to panic and rack their brains for counter-arguments, Wang Jianchong waved and interrupted Jing Muyao's story. No need to say more. No matter what, he's an outsider, yet he barged into Heaven's Origin Academy, then assaulted and humiliated our disciples. Behavior like this is simply unforgivable. This Vice Palace Master of Heaven's Origin Academy had a calm, indifferent look on his face, but his voice boomed, and his words were forceful. Xin Wuyao was stunned. She couldn't help but say, Uncle Master Wang, they were obviously the ones who started it, so why? Wang Jianchong furrowed his brow, then interrupted her again. Xin Wuyao, you're an inner sect disciple here too, yet during the battle just now, you made no attempts to stop them. Now, here you are, arguing on behalf of an outsider. What is the meaning of this? Xin Muyao's expression shifted, and her heart surged with indescribable anger. This was her first time encountering such a situation, and she almost dared not believe that someone as esteemed as the Vice Palace Head would say something like that. Meanwhile, Xiang Ming and the others relaxed, and their eyes lit up with wordless, complacent glee. There was no way they'd miss that Wang Jianchong planned to intervene on their behalf. Xin Wuya was the daughter of the Xing family, yet she couldn't even see through Wang Jianchong's intentions. She deserved her scolding. Out of respect for your father and for your master, I won't pursue this matter, Wang Jianchong snorted coldly. But if you persist, don't blame me for punishing you in accordance with sect regulations. Xing Muyao gnashed her teeth and was just about to respond when Sui patted her on the shoulder. He said flatly, when you encounter someone impervious to reason, arguing is a pointless waste of time. Just ignore him. If he insists on seeking death, I don't mind giving it to him. Xing Muyao was stunned. She was moved, but more than that, she couldn't help but feel flabbergasted. Uncle Su doesn't even take the Vice Palace Master seriously? That's amazing. What? What did you just say? Wang Jianchong's face reddened, and his eyes bulged. The other's eyes widened in disbelief. Who among them would dare believe that, even under these circumstances, Su Yi would dare say a Vice Palace Chief was seeking death? Search for the original. Even when Ling Zhao was a bit flabbergasted. Why didn't I realize earlier that this seemingly aloof, above-it-all guy was actually so wildly arrogant? Brother Wang, please remain calm. I already understand the situation. What need is there to lose your temper with a mere child who knows not the grandeur of the heavens nor the depths of the earth? Leave this to me. The elder in Confucian robes and a wide belt laughed, then stepped forth, his cold gaze landing on Su Yi. Youngster, you just forced our disciples to their knees. I'll give you just one chance, kneel and await your punishment, or else. Before he could finish, Sui's calm voice cut him off. 
Don't waste your breath. If you want to throw your life away, get on with it already. I guarantee that you won't live to tell the tale. As he spoke, he walked over to a boulder near the pine tree, then set down his writing implements. The atmosphere changed sharply, it was now as oppressive as could be. Everyone, from Xiang Ming and his lackeys to Wen Ling Zhao, stared blankly at Su Yi. This seemed so absurd, they couldn't even put it into words. The elder in Confucian robes was called Chu Kong Chao, and he was the eighth-ranked elder of Heaven's Origin Academy, with second-level Inner Furnace Realm cultivation. His attainments in the Martial Dao were so impressive that mundane martial artists of the same cultivation were no match for him. Yet now, Sui dared insult him like this. Even Wang Jianchong and the Whiskered Swordsman were stunned. You cocky little brat! Chu Kong Chao was so angry, his expression was ashen. He leaped into the air, and the aura of a martial Dao Grandmaster instantly surged around him. It was like the sudden eruption of a long dormant volcano. His surging chi and blood bore down on his surroundings, throwing the air currents into turmoil and scattering rocks and sand. So strong! The disciples' hearts shook, and their expressions filled with excitement and anticipation. Sui provoked the Eighth Elder into attacking? He really doesn't know the meaning of the word death. Boom! Chu Kong Chao didn't give them any time to think at all. He simply charged and attacked with all his might. His fingers were like sharp swords as they reached for Su Yi. Dazzling light circulated around his digits, eye-catching and bright, they really did look like sharpened knives. As his hand shot towards his target, the air ripped apart like cotton with a shrill wail. The mid-rank earth-level secret tome, the flying goose grab. If it hit its mark, it could tear through metal walls as easily as if they were made of paper. Even just watching from a distance, Xiang Ming felt suffocated. Alas, although none of them knew it, Su Yi had slain a young third-level Grandmaster of the Wheel of the Moon sect just last night. They certainly didn't know just how many Grandmasters had fallen at Su Yi's hands of late. A faint, cold smile tugged at Su Yi's lips, and he gently shook his head. Only when Chu Kong Chao drew close did he finally stretch out his hand, clench it into a fist, and swing. Like a deity beating a massive drum. Crunch! Crunch! Su Yi's fist was like a streak of flowing light, yet it had unblockable momentum. When it landed, all ten of Chu Kong Chao's sharp, sword-like fingers snapped and broke. The joints, bones, and tendons burst with a splatter of blood. With nothing left to block it, Su Yi's punch continued, slamming ruthlessly into Chu Kong Chao's chest. Bang! Beneath the crowd's shocked gazes, Chu Kong Chao's gaunt frame snapped like a kite with its strings cut, flew through the air, and slammed into the cliffside over a hundred feet away with a low, muffled boom. The surrounding rocks crumbled and scattered. Bones cracked and tendons snapped in rapid succession, the sound reminiscent of beans sizzling in a hot walk. When the elder fell from the cliff, he just lay there, sprawled out like mud, his head lolling to the side. He was no longer breathing. One punch was enough to kill a grandmaster. That inexorable momentum and domineering presence shocked everyone present. Their hearts clenched violently in their chest. This. Xiang Ming and the other intersect disciples felt as if their souls had left their bodies. They dared not believe their own eyes. That was the Eighth Elder. How mighty was he, even amongst Grandmasters? Yet now, some Qi accumulation teenager had killed him in a single punch? When Ling Zhao's beautiful face froze, and her eyes widened in a daze. That fist was like a heavy hammer, it struck the tranquil waters of her heart, stirring up great waves of shock. All of the deep-rooted pride and confidence she had when she faced Sui shattered, as if that fist smashed it into powder. Her jade-like hands silently clenched, and she pursed her lips. Those clear eyes seemed to mist over with bewilderment. It's only been a month since he recovered his cultivation, but he can already obliterate Grandmasters. Father wasn't lying to me after all. 
Uncle Su really is terrifying. Xing Liao's heart shook with terror, and her beautiful eyes widened. She couldn't help but recall her father's repeated reminders. Young Lord Su is a man like a banished immortal. He might look young, but his methods are miraculous, like stealing fortune from the heavens. Whatever you do, you must not show him the slightest disrespect. At the time, Jin Liao had only half believed him, but now, she had no choice but to take his words seriously. As for Wang Jianchong and the whiskered swordsman, they were instantly solemn, and their expressions changed radically. The power of that fist shook them too. Their hearts and minds trembled, and they realized that something wasn't quite right here. Sui was just a qi accumulation youth, yet he slew Chu Kong Chao in a single punch before their very eyes. Who could have anticipated this? It was Sui who broke the following deathly silence. He said flatly, I don't want any more nonsense, nor do I wish to waste any more time. If you're not convinced, just attack. Let's get this over with. In his blue robes, he looked cool and aloof, just as he had before. Yet in the eyes of the crowd, this mere 17-year-old now emanated an aura so terrifying, their hearts quivered. Sui, do you have any idea of the consequences of what you've just done? If you insist on becoming our irreconcilable enemy, I'm afraid you won't make it out of Heaven's Origin Academy today. The whiskered man's tone was grave, and his face was ashen. Sui glanced at him. Draw your sword, and I'll grant you death. Waves coursed through everyone's hearts once more. The whiskered swordsman was called Li Fengxing, and he was the academy's seventh elder, a grandmaster of the Tao of the Sword. He'd once traveled throughout the Great Zhou, polishing his swordsmanship for 13 years to create his own personal sword art. The Nine Flowing Cloud Strikes. He was famed throughout the province. It hadn't been long since he entered the sect. Otherwise, with his attainments in the martial Tao, he would easily be among the sect's top five elders. Yet now, Sui was announcing his intentions to grant Li Fengxing death. You really are vicious. Li Fengxing sighed, then suddenly drew his sword. In an instant, his gaze was as sharp and intimidating as the edge of his blade. He hefted his blade and stepped forth, his frame seemingly enveloped in an ethereal, floating cloud. As for his sword, countless streaks of faint, misty sword chi instantly manifested around it, like clustered rain clouds. They were beautiful, and they looked gentle and soft to the extreme. Yet extremely dangerous, too. Those streaks of sword chi could easily pierce heavy iron armor or shatter boulders and steel. They were incomparably sharp. When he slashed his sword, if his opponent failed to block it, the countless streaks of misty sword chi would slice them into tiny chunks of meat. Sui arched his brow, and the depths of his gaze faintly lit up. This sword is actually somewhat interesting. But just as he was about to strike, a dignified voice, like the ringing of a temple bell, filled the air and echoed throughout the surrounding area. Stay your hand. Chapter 186 Ning Sihua The Grand Elder Everyone's hearts shook when they recognized the owner of that booming, resonant voice. Clang! Li Fengxing's wrist shifted, and the fine, misty sword rain permeating the air instantly dispersed. His mist-shrouded figure suddenly froze in mid-air. Then, he pressed off the ground and flew back, like a swallow returning to its nest. The ease with which he changed course was beautiful. Sui couldn't help but nod to himself. This person's attainments in the Tao of the Sword have already reached the threshold, albeit just barely. He's not much inferior to Changuoka, a disciple of the Hidden Dragon Sword sect. Of course, had he finished swinging his sword, Li Fengxing would have died beyond a doubt. Three figures appeared further down the mountain path. Their leader was a woman in a deep purple, cloud-patterned skirt. Her long hair was tied up in a bun. She was petite, and her features were extremely clear and youthful, she looked about twelve. However, as her eyes took in her surroundings, her gaze contained traces of the vicissitudes of life. 
This gave her a highly distinctive quality, her delicate appearance brimmed with imposing majesty. H.M. When he saw her, Su Yi's eyes narrowed, revealing a rare hint of surprise. This woman's features spoke of rejuvenation, but it was all natural, with no artifice. She couldn't possibly be using a technique to retain a youthful appearance, either. This is quite interesting. Either she's an old Yao, or she has a highly distinctive bloodline talent. In this mundane world, not even those they call earthly immortals can master the profundities of rejuvenation and fully reclaim their youths. In addition to the Grand Elder, Ming Sihua was also accompanied by a decrepit elder with his hands hidden in his sleeves and a man with an axe-shaped mustache and a scar across his brow. Uncle Su, that's the palace master, as well as the great, second, and third elders. Jing Wuyao seized the opportunity and explained at top speeds, her pretty little face filled with awe and dread. Only now did Sui realize who these people were. The Heaven's Origin Academy Palace Master, Ning Sihua. She was practically a legend amongst martial Dao Grandmasters. Her background was mysterious. It had been 20 years since she first took up her position in Heaven's Origin Academy, but she was always either in secluded cultivation or out wandering the uninhabited wilderness. Like a leisurely cloud or solitary crane. She almost never paid worldly affairs any heed. Despite being its palace master, it was extremely rare for her to inquire about the academy's affairs, to the point that the vast majority of their disciples had never once seen her face. She was mysterious to the extreme. But almost without exception, whenever anyone brought up the mysterious, highest authority of Heaven's Origin Academy, their awe and reverence came straight from the heart. While chatting last night, Zhou Zhili mentioned something that the current imperial preceptor, Hong Shenzhen, once said. Throughout the empire's ten great academies, Palace Master Ning Sihua of Heaven's Origin Academy is the most mysterious. She's like a Yao, and you cannot appraise her recklessly. Looking at her now, based simply on her youthful rejuvenation, it seemed Hong Shenzhen wasn't exaggerating. She really was like a Yao. The decrepit old man beside Ning Sihua was Grand Elder Shangjin, a fifth-level Grandmaster. The gaunt middle-aged man with the axe-like mustache and scarred forehead was the second elder, Han Chong, a mighty fourth-level Grandmaster. It had been years since anyone saw any trace of Palace Master Ning Sihua, yet all of a sudden, here she was, with the sect's greatest elders alongside her. The crowd's hearts shook, and their expressions were instantly solemn. Greetings, Palace Master. Wang Jianchong, Li Fenqing, Xiang Ming, and the other disciples all bowed. The atmosphere was instantly solemn. Only Sui just stood there, perfectly leisurely and at ease, not moving in the slightest. The sight was rather jarring. When Ning Sihua arrived, she walked right up to Chu Kongchao's corpse and scrutinized it carefully. When he saw this, Wang Jianchong hurried toward her and explained, Palace Master, just now. I already know. Ning Sihua didn't so much as glance at him. Her voice was clear, crisp, and pleasant to the ear, like heavenly music. But at the same time, it contained a natural, imposing majesty. Wang Jianchong's words stuck in his throat, and he sank into silence. After a while, Ning Sihua looked away, then turned around. Second Elder, attend to Chu Kongchao's remains. The man with the axe-like mustache, Han Chong, nodded firmly, picked up the corpse, then strode off. Next, Ming Sihua ordered, Grand Elder, lead the disciples away. Yes. The wizened old man, Shang Jin, clasped his fist, then swept his gaze across Xiang Ming and the other disciples. Let's go. He put his hands behind his back, then was the first to leave. Although the disciples longed to stay behind and watch the spectacle, the circumstances left them no choice but to suppress their emotions and obediently follow the Grand Elder away. Xing Wuyao couldn't help but glance at Su Yi, who nodded, tacitly agreeing for her to leave. However, when he saw Wen Ling Zhao turn to leave with the others, he furrowed his brow. Wait until we've finished our business. 
It won't be too late to leave then. It was just one sentence, but it made the already solemn atmosphere noticeably heavier. The crowd's hearts shook, and their expressions changed. Who would have thought that Sui would be so brazen even after the palace master made a personal appearance? It was like he didn't even realize that his life hung by a thread. Xing Weiao's heart was on tenderhooks. She almost couldn't resist the urge to speak up. Uncle Su, at a time like this, you really can't go on acting so tough. Meanwhile, Xiang Ming, Tian Dong, and the others were secretly mad with delight. This guy sure seems intent on getting himself killed. Hasn't he realized that not even the Vice Palace Master dares speak out of turn now that the Palace Master is here? When Ling Zhao was caught off guard too. She froze, and the expression on her beautiful face changed erratically. She felt an indescribable sense of absurdity. He. Is he seriously still hung up on that paper contract? Don't tell me he's not at all worried about the danger. Wang Jianchong couldn't help but laugh coldly. I've seen recklessness before, but never anyone so suicidal. Does he really think that his ability to slay a grandmaster in a single punch means he needn't fear the palace master? Everyone instinctively glanced at Ning Sihua, but to their surprise, her clear, youthful features didn't so much as ripple. She thought for a moment, then said, then have one Ling Zhao stay behind. Dot. Sui's earlier objections were already hard to swallow, but Ning Sihua's response left them rather dumbstruck. What's going on? Since when was our palace master such a pushover? Xiang Ming and the other disciples' delight vanished without a trace, replaced with a sense of despondency. They felt so stifled that they almost coughed up blood. But no one dared utter a single word of complaint. It was under this strange, stifled atmosphere that Grand Elder Shangjin led Xiang Ming and the others away. Before long, they disappeared beyond the foot of Divine Firmament Peak. Now, in addition to Su Yi and Wen Ling Zhao, only three of Heaven's Origin Academy's higher-ups remained before Birdsong Pavilion, Ming Sihua, Wang Jianchong, and Li Fengxing. Wen Ling Zhao pursed her lips and said nothing, but her heart was in turmoil. She felt deeply conflicted. Search for the original. Even she had no choice but to admit that everything that had happened today had repeatedly overturned her perception of reality, to the point that now, none of this felt quite real. She almost felt as if she were dreaming. Wang Jianchong and Li Fengxing felt rather confused too. The palace master had come in person, this alone was no small matter. She was surely here to deal with Sui, but why had she sent all the others away? Sui just stood there as if none of this had anything to do with him. He just walked over to the boulder where he'd placed his writing implements and started readying the ink. He really didn't want to waste any more time. When they saw what he was up to, Wang Jianchong and Li Fengxing were dumbstruck, they almost didn't believe their eyes. This guy really doesn't take the palace master seriously at all. But it was then that Ning Sihua walked over, her steps light and airy. She stopped beside Sui, seemingly curious. Fellow Taoist, why is it that someone of your caliber is so concerned about a mere paper contract? Fellow Taoist? Sui was still grinding ink when he heard this, and for a moment, his hands froze. He hadn't heard that title for a long time. For a moment, he looked dazed. Memories of his past life, one scene after another, flashed through his mental sight. Fellow Taoist. That title sure is nostalgic. Sui glanced up at the famously mysterious woman, the palace master of Heaven's Origin Academy, the person Imperial Preceptor Hong Shinchan once described as like a Yao. Since you already know what I'm doing, why ask? Are you planning to stop me, he said. His tone was casual, but it contained no respect, much less dread. It even sounded a bit like an interrogation. When Ling Zhao's eyes widened, and she found it increasingly impossible to stay calm. Meanwhile, Wang Jianchong's brow furrowed in displeasure. Just as he was about to lose control and interject, Ming Sihua gently shook her head. 
I just don't understand. Why concern yourself with the opinions of the mundane world? Why not simply ignore it? Wang Jianchong forced the words at the tip of his tongue back down. He looked bewildered. What is the palace master trying to do? He glanced over at Li Fengxing, but he looked completely baffled too. I dwell within the mortal world, how can I possibly disregard it? In my eyes, this is ridding myself of an obsession and clearing mental barriers. If I simply ignore my obsession, how am I to rid myself of it? How am I to speak of the Tao then, said Sui flatly. Having said this, he sank back into thought. Ridding yourself of obsession, clearing mental barriers. Ming Sihua repeated, then nodded. So that's why. All right, but before signing your contract, might I ask how you propose to resolve what happened here today, fellow Taoist? Wang Jianchong and Li Fengxing glanced at each other, and their spirits lifted. Is the palace master finally going to take action? Su Yi set down the ink and ink stone, then turned to the nearby youthful looking woman and said flatly, since you seem to understand a little. You ought to know just how grave the consequences of becoming my enemy would be. Impudent. Wang Jianchong couldn't help but bellow, Su Yi, you still dare make such wild threats? This is an affront to our palace master's prestige, you deserve to die a thousand deaths for this. Su Yi's brow furrowed, but Ming Sihua only sighed. I've embarrassed myself, fellow Taoist. Her pleasant, melodious voice still ringing through the skies, she raised her right hand and gently waved it through the air. Bang! The nearby Wang Jianchong was like a little boat in the face of a raging tidal wave. He was sent flying, and he slammed directly into the cliffside, bleeding from his mouth and nose. He was fully embedded in the rock. Li Fengxing's heart shook, and he stood there, rooted to the spot. Even if you whacked him over the head, he never would have guessed that the palace master would attack Wang Jianchong out of nowhere. Wen Lingzhao was stunned too. She couldn't even imagine why this was happening. Palace Master Wang Jianchong fell to the ground, his head still buzzing and his expression uncertain. Ming Sihua said lightly, go to the Cliffs of Penance. You are not to take a single step outside for a year. This. Wang Jianchong was dumbstruck. The Cliffs of Penance. That was the harshest, coldest place in the entire academy. Typically, only the most grievous of offenders were sent there to repent. Those in prison had to endure the torment of biting winds and fierce rains day and night. Wang Jianchong was a grandmaster, but if he was trapped there for a year, the torture would deal an enormous blow to his vitality, and that's assuming he even made it out alive. Chapter 187 Using Martial Arts to Control the Spiritual and Force to Manifest Technique Wang Jianchong quivered from head to toe, then struggled his way out of the cliffside. He took a deep breath and was just about to say something when Ming Sihua's brow furrowed slightly. Do you have something else to say? Her pleasant voice carried a hint of a chill. Wang Jianchong's heart sank. He clasped his fist and lowered his head. I'll carry out your orders, palace master. With that, he turned and limped off, his heart filled with sourness and bewilderment. I'm still a vice palace master here, aren't I? Why would the palace master attack me? I just don't get it. Li Fengxing watched him disappear. Waves coursed through his heart too, and he couldn't calm down. He realized that something strange was happening, and he fell increasingly silent. As for Wen Ling Zhao, she was equally quiet. She was trying her best to stay calm, but her heart surged with emotions she couldn't quite tame, to the point that her bewilderment showed on her face. She stood there, dazed and distracted. Search Pori.com for the original. Then, out of nowhere, Sui said, that's two people whose lives you've saved from right under my nose. This declaration seemed a bit random. But Ning Sihua instantly understood. Fellow Taoist, you were right, when you dwell within the mundane world, it's hard to avoid its fetters. I am the palace master of Heaven's Origin Academy. 
If I want to immerse myself in my cultivation, I need people to assist me with various trifles. And how do you intend to resolve today's incident? Sui asked with great interest. Ming Sihua thought for a moment. How about you treat me to a drink? A drink to dissolve our enmity? Sui's eyebrow shot up. A hint of a smile rose on Ming Sihua's immature features. She said, her tone rife with implied meaning, has there ever been any enmity between us? Today won't work. Sui shook his head, then raised his brush and dipped it in the weld ink. But, he said offhandedly, if I get the chance some other time, there's no reason we can't drink until we're both dead drunk. There was no way he'd fail to realize Ning Sihua's intentions. She wanted to use sharing a drink as an excuse to have an in-depth discussion with him. There was no doubt about it, this mysterious woman capable of youthful rejuvenation had sensed something in him. In her eyes, what happened here today wasn't even worth mentioning. Of course, Sui felt the same way. In that sense, the two of them really did have reason to call each other fellow Taoist. Both of them disdained the petty squabbles of the mundane world. There was no way they'd concern themselves with what happened earlier. Ming Sihua was momentarily stunned, but after a brief silence, she said, that works too. She then stood off to the side and said no more. As for Su Yi, he held his breath and focused, sinking into silence and staring at the white paper spread across the boulder. As if sensing what was about to happen, a pair of jade-like fists clenched. When Ling Zhao's heart filled with an unprecedented sense of humiliation, and she could no longer remain silent, Sui, I already said that I'd rather die than sign your contract. The young woman paused for emphasis between each syllable, practically spitting her words through her tightly clenched teeth. Her peerlessly beautiful yet icy cold face brimmed with determination and hatred. Ming Sihua looked at her but said nothing. The light of the sun was gentle and warm. A breeze blew through the mountains, rustling the pines. The young woman's furious, determined words seemed sudden and out of place against the tranquil scenery, they were even a bit jarring. Sui remained silent, his expression calm. Only his eyes flashed with a sharp light, like the edge of a sword. Then, he picked up his brush and swept it across the page. Eight characters appeared on the white paper, written with such force that they bled through the page, completed in a single breath. They were free, forceful, and unrestrained. The paper was white as snow, the ink as dark as night. Ha! Ah. Sui let out a long breath of turbid air, then casually flung his brush aside. He pointed to the paper resting on the boulder, then glanced at the nearby Wen Ling Zhao. This isn't a letter of repudiation, nor is it a contract. I disdain using such methods to humiliate you, we were strangers to begin with and our arranged marriage made us spouses in name only. From now on, there is nothing between us at all. With that, he put his hands behind his back, turned, and walked away. He couldn't even be bothered to wait and see her reaction. After today, what would it matter if she got together with Xiang Ming? He wouldn't care in the least. The way he saw it, the eight characters written on the page were like a sword, severing all of his restraints. They weren't particularly dynamic, much less profoundly affecting. Nevertheless, that light, ethereal line of eight characters contained everything Sui wanted to express. This was a decent way to end it. Fellow Taoist said Ming Sihua softly. Sui just stood there without so much as turning his head to look at her. Do you have business? Since we were destined to meet, how about we spar, said Ming Sihua. This time, Sui turned and stared at the nearby, youthful-looking Ming Sihua. One attack to determine victory and defeat? Ming Sihua smiled. Both of us live within the mundane world. We needn't rush to determine a victor. All I ask is that you help open my eyes. Oh, said Sui. Come on then. Ming Sihua stretched out her hand. Her long, slender fingers spread out like lotus petals, then clenched into a fist. Then, she lightly knocked the air. 
Instantly, a wisp of clear, melodious birdsong reverberated throughout the mountains, shaking the pines and scattering the clouds. Li Fengxing watched from afar as a transparent, crystalline lotus hand seal appeared in Ming Xiao's palm and swept forth. In an instant, it was like a dazzlingly radiant lotus blooming between heaven and earth. It released vast swathes of light, like a divine technique, mysterious and inscrutable. How could anyone call this a mundane martial art? This was like the magic spoken of in legends. What level of power is this? When Ling Zhao was shaken, and she watched in a daze. She'd long since heard who knows how many rumors about their mysterious palace master's power, but she would never have thought that when Ning Sihua really took action, it would be so unbelievable. Then, she watched as Su Yi's eyebrows shifted upward. With a sudden shake of his sleeves, his hands pulled the air. Abundant, flourishing power surged from his palms, gradually gathering above them. It was as if his hands held the sun and moon aloft. One was Yang, those who obey me live. The other was Yin, those who go against me die. One Yin, one Yang, life and death. Both hands moved closer together and... Boom! The lotus hand seal flew through the air and descended, but when it clashed with Su Yi's joint hands, the result was a low, muffled boom. Immediately afterward, the birdsong increased in pitch, and an unbelievable scene unfolded. The blocked hand seal bloomed, splitting into layer after layer after layer and materializing into a vibrant, lifelike, fiery red vermilion bird. The bird bathed in flame as it spread its wings, and a flood of terrifying destructive power spread out around it. Immortal magic! Li Fengxin gasped, and his heart shook. As for Wen Ling Zhao, she was already rooted to the spot, her mind blank. Su Yi's dark eyes subtly lit up, and a hint of a playful grin tugged at the corners of his lips. Using martial arts to control the spiritual and force to manifest technique? To him, that wasn't even worth mentioning. His hands suddenly intercrossed, like a pair of millstones, drawing on the starkly different powers of firmness and softness. They suddenly converged. It was like an intersection of yin and yang or the cycle of life and death. Boom! The fiery vermilion bird had only just spread its wings as if to take flight when the two millstones suppressed it. They crushed it, inch by inch, like they were grinding grain sparks scattered in all directions, and as these two powers clashed, the sound of rumbling rang out. And when Su Yi's hands fully overlapped, the vermilion bird born of a hand seal was frittered away to nothingness. It dispersed, leaving nothing behind. Everyone fell silent. Li Fengxing quivered from head to toe. Witnessing this duel had shaken him, mind and soul. He felt as if he'd witnessed immortals practicing their magics, he found it hard to stay in control. Only now did he realize that had he really fought Sui just now, if the Grand Elder hadn't yelled for him to stop or if he didn't pull back just in time, he would already be dead. Only now did he understand what Su Yi meant when he said Ning Sihua had saved two lives. The palace master's arrival really had saved two people, Li Fengxing and Wang Jianzhong. As soon as this thought occurred to him, Li Fengxing couldn't help but break out in cold sweats. He realized that he just had a brush with death. The most ridiculous part was that he was only just now realizing it. Meanwhile, when Ling Zhao's mind was completely blank with bewilderment, the palace master's attack was so high level, yet that guy actually blocked it. It was then that Ning Sihua exclaimed, fellow Taoist, if I don't mistake my guess, you quenched all 108 spiritual apertures, then achieved full spiritual awakening of the acupoints in one fell swoop, achieving peerless foundations. Her bright eyes shone with a strange light, it seemed she found it hard to believe. Using martial arts to control the spiritual and force to manifest technique? Seeing this, I think you'd long since transcended the four realms of the martial Tao, but it turns out you achieved this within the mirror inner furnace realm, said Sui flatly. Using martial arts to control the spiritual and force to manifest technique referred to controlling the force and spiritual energy of heaven and earth to derive powers reminiscent of magic. 
Of course, ordinary grandmasters had no hope of achieving this. Only those who, in the inner furnace realm, tempered five-colored spiritual radiance could master power of this level. Grandmasters were those who refined their organs, the heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and kidneys. These major organs were like five furnaces within the body, hence the name the inner furnace realm. Five-colored spiritual radiance referred to refining these five organ furnaces to achieve spiritual Tao light, the spiritual radiance of the five elements, wood, metal, fire, water, and earth. Wood's light was green, and it was nourished within the liver furnace. Metal's light was golden, and it was nourished within the long furnace. And so on and so forth. The five major organs were like furnaces, and when they each shone with spiritual light, they created a fully perfected power. This was the highest secret of the five levels of the Grandmaster Realm. Refining the innards wasn't difficult, the hard part was obtaining spiritual radiance. This was no easier than achieving full spiritual awakening of the acupoints in the Qi Accumulation Realm. Even in the nine provinces of the wilds, less than one in ten thousand could accomplish such a feat. But Ming Sihua was one of those peerless existences. Despite this, Su Yi, with his qi accumulation cultivation, could easily diffuse her profound and inscrutable attack and discern its nature. That was precisely why Ming Sihua was so surprised. Fellow Taoist, you're truly incomparable to mundane martial artists, said Ming Sihua, her voice soft and pleasing to the ear. After this, should I get the chance? I'll be sure to consult with you, and I hope you won't be stingy." Sui laughed dryly. Next time we meet, so long as you can take one of my attacks, I'll be sure to treat you with good quality brew. Ming Sihua couldn't help but smile, her eyes carrying a hint of laughter. Fellow Taoist, you're quite vindictive. This is called giving as good as one gets. Had I failed to take your attack just now, I'm afraid you have been reluctant to let me leave so easily. Sui shook his head and waved. Farewell. With that, he turned around and left. His blue robes willowed as he faded into the distance. From beginning to end, he didn't so much as glance at Wen Ling Zhao. It was only after Su Yi's tall, aloof figure disappeared from view that Ming Sihua retracted her gaze and glanced at the boulder beside the pine tree. The writing implements were laid out on its surface, as well as Su Yi's newest work of calligraphy, parting will be best for both of us, so let's each seek happiness on our own. Each character was free and unbridled, and the ink bled through the page. At a glance, it looked like a sword severing its fetters, revealing sanguinese, rife with meaning. Chapter 188 Concessions Ming Sihua stared intently at the line of text, then said, Actually, I think that ending your relationship like this is a good thing. Someone like him. In this world, what woman could possibly capture his heart? Hearing this immediately stunned Wen Ling Zhao out of her daze and complex mix of emotions. She pursed her lips and said, I never liked him to begin with. But although she said that, she felt a certain indescribable heaviness and irritation in her heart. In the past, she would surely have been furious. A live-in husband used a piece of paper to draw a line between them? How ridiculous was that? Yet now, when she recalled the various abilities Su Yi had only just displayed, she felt only wordless despondency and melancholy. For the past year, ever since her wedding day, she thought of nothing but how to free herself of this wedding contract. To that end, she'd done everything in her power to increase her cultivation, and she'd never dared slack off in the slightest. Finally, she became the most dazzling inheritor of Heaven's Origin Academy, and she won the praises and envy of countless sectmates. Support us at. The numerous sect higher-ups all thought highly of her as well. They thought that she had a chance to break into the ranks of Marshall Dao Grandmasters next year, at just 18 years of age. She'd always seen the Featherflow King, Yu Shir Chan, as her goal. She wanted to become a titled Marquis within three years. That way, she could go to the Jade Capital's Su family to discuss conditions and find a way to convince them to agree to undo her marriage contract. 
As for Sui himself, she'd always seen him as a stranger. She'd never once hoped that Sui, her live-in husband, could be of any use at all towards her goal of voiding their marriage. It would be enough if he didn't make things any worse. She would never have guessed that, when she saw Sui after just a month apart, he'd be like an entirely different person. He'd forced Xian Ming, the son of the provincial governor, to kneel in the dirt. He'd killed Elder Chu Kong Chao in a single punch. Even after the long secluded palace master took action, he blocked her practically miraculous attack with power to spare. All of this was just so unbelievable. Sui was nothing like the version of him that lived in her head. The power at his disposal was terrifying, and the gap between reality and her expectations was indescribably enormous. Is this what it means for someone to leave you in the dust? Ming Sihua suddenly asked, Do you want this line of text? When Ling Zhao paused for a moment, then glanced at the white paper spread out atop the boulder. The sight of it filled her indescribable anger. Some time passed before she finally gnashed her teeth and said, I want it. This is going to become proof of your humiliation, which you'll use to renew your courage and motivate yourself to grow stronger and stronger. All for the sake of one day taking an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Is that right? asked Ming Sihua with great interest. When Ling Zhao took a deep breath, and her clear eyes filled with wordless determination. I just want to prove that I absolutely won't turn out inferior to him. Ming Sihua didn't make fun of her, but her eyes filled with pity. She sighed, I suppose it's possible that a miracle will occur? No one can say for sure. As she said this, she picked up the paper and passed it to Wen Ling Zhao. These words contain no intent to slander or humiliate you. The way I see it, there's no way he'd concern himself with the laws and regulations of mundanity. Why not choose to let this go? Wouldn't it be a form of release? When Ling Zhao picked up the paper, and the eight unrestrained characters on its surface reflected in her clear eyes. She felt as if needles were pricking her heart. She silently put the paper away, then clutched it tight, her pretty face pallid and her lips pursed. Palace master, everyone has to make their own choices, and I absolutely refuse to just lower my head like this. Ming Sihua evaluated the picturesque beauty in the snowy white dress and, on a whim, said, Are you willing to cultivate alongside me? When Ling Zhao's dim eyes suddenly lit up, like ashes reigniting with firelight. That. That would be my honor, but might I first discuss it with my master? Xu Guqing, asked Ning Sihua. There's no way she'll refuse. It's up to you. When Ling Zhao took a deep breath and said decisively, I'm willing. Ning Sihua nodded. Today, you shall move into my palace of withering and growth. You shall cultivate their going forward. As she said this, she suddenly recalled something. Why wasn't your master here today? She's been out on a mission. She went to the Cloud River Prefectural Capital too. When Ling Zhao explained the whole situation. When she finished, she couldn't help but look confused. I received a letter from my master several days ago saying that she'd already departed the Cloud River Prefectural Capital, so she ought to have arrived the day before yesterday. Something must have delayed her en route, said Ming Sihua, but she didn't take it to heart. She was just about to leave when she suddenly turned to the nearby Li Fengxing. You are not to leak word of what happened here today. Li Fengxing solemnly clasped his fist. I shall humbly carry out your orders. That goes for you too, said Ning Sihua, this time turning her gaze on Wen Ling Zhao. Wen Ling Zhao's gaze dimmed somewhat, but she nodded her agreement. The foot of Mount Autumn Leaf. Xing Muiao waited beside the horse-drawn carriage, frantic and unable to calm herself down. What happened today had startled her, and she felt a sense of foreboding. Miss, since young Lord Su dared attack, it was naturally no reckless whim, said the carriage driver, Uncle Liao. His tone was gentle and comforting. He'd already learned some of what happened on Divine Firmament Peak from Jing Muiao. At first, he'd been stunned too, 
but he soon calmed down and considered Su Yi's abilities and disposition. This was someone who dared slay the Wheel of the Moon sect Elder Lu Hongqi. How could the consequences of killing someone within Heaven's Origin Academy possibly be enough to scare him? Even if he provoked disaster, he naturally had means of coping with it. Uncle Liao, you don't know this part yet, but this incident startled even the palace master out of her multi-year seclusion. If conflict occurs between them, I'm afraid the consequences for Uncle Su will be unimaginable, said Jing Liao with obvious worry. Uncle Liao fell silent. He naturally knew full well how mysterious and powerful Ning Sihua was. In the Imperatorial Province, the Heaven's Origin Academy Palace Master occupied a transcendent position, there was no one else like her. Over the years, Provincial Governor Xiang Tianqiu had visited Heaven's Origin Academy in hopes of an audience on numerous occasions, only to be turned away at the door each time. He wasn't fated to meet with her. Even so, Xiang Tianqiu dared not get angry. What do I do? If father finds out that I was the one who brought Uncle Su to Heaven's Origin Academy, leading to an incident on this level, he'll... Xing Liao suddenly froze mid-sentence. This was because, further down the mountain path, she saw a tall figure walking toward them. His gait was leisurely, tranquil, and relaxed, and the blue of his robe stood out against the mists. It was Su Yi. Xing Liao instantly lit up with surprise and delight. She was so excited, she rushed up to greet him. Uncle Su, you're not hurt, are you? Do I look hurt? Su Yi laughed and asked right back. He was in a good mood, he hadn't made this trip in vain. He'd finally drawn a clear line between himself and Wen Ling Zhao and rid himself of one of his obsessions. From this day forth, he no longer needed to live in fear of green hats. But this matter wasn't really over. It was just as Wen Ling Zhao said, in the world of the mundane, they couldn't resolve their legal marriage contract unless the Su family nodded their head. The ordinary people of the world would inevitably still see Su Yi as a live-in son-in-law. Su Yi already didn't care too much about all that. With the Wen family's foundations, how could they possibly treat him with disrespect? As for the Su family, when he went to pay them a visit in person, he'd just deal with this alongside his former grudges and be done with it. I just knew you'd be okay, exclaimed Jing Muyao, waving her pink fists in the air. Is there any need to get so worked up? Su Yi shook his head, then headed straight for the carriage. Young Lord Su, where are we going next? Uncle Liao asked respectfully, a hint of awe on his face. Su Yi just slew a Heaven's Origin Academy elder within their territory, yet he somehow emerged and scathed. Who wouldn't admire him after that? Back to the house of wave-swept rocks. Su Yi boarded the carriage, then lay down and relaxed his entire body. Exhaustion coursed through him. Dispelling Ming Sihua's attack might have looked easy, but it was actually enormously draining. Both his cultivation base and his soul felt feeble. He thought to himself, next time I see her, I'll have to show that woman just how strong I am. Xing Wuya walked up to him and, of her own volition, smiled and got to work kneading his legs. Heaven's Origin Academy, the Hall of Punishment Grand Elder Shangjin sat there in silence. He was so old and decrepit, he was like a candle flickering in the wind, and his eyes were cloudy with cataracts. The atmosphere was tense and stifled. Xiang Ming, Tian Dong, and the others stood there, fearful and ill at ease. They didn't know why the Grand Elder had led them to a dark, sinister place like the Hall of Punishment. They certainly didn't understand why Xing Muyao got to leave right away while they'd been retained here. The Grand Elder didn't explain either. After arriving in the Hall of Punishment, he just sat there, his eyes half-closed, as if he were dozing off. A long time passed before the sound of footsteps rang out, and the halberd-mustached second elder, Han Chong, walked inside. Shang Jin's turbid eyes finally opened. What do you think we ought to do with them? Xiang Ming and the other disciples' hearts instantly clenched. Confine them for a month as a token punishment. 
That will be enough, said Han Chong expressionlessly. Xiang Ming couldn't help but say, Uncle Master Han, we did nothing wrong. Why are you punishing us? He was the son of the provincial governor, the disciple of Vice Palace Master Wang Jian Chong. He naturally had the confidence to ask such a question. Han Chang's expression was calm and indifferent. When you do something wrong, you naturally must pay the corresponding price. If you hadn't provoked him first, how could he possibly have forced you to your knees? That. Xiang Ming opened his mouth and was just about to explain when. Your master has already been sent to the cliffs of penance for punishment, said Han Chong. He cannot take so much as a half step outside for a year. Xiang Ming's heart shook, and his expression changed dramatically. He was now fully aware of how serious this matter was. His master, Wang Jianchong, was one of the sect's two vice palace masters, yet he received such an extreme punishment. Even without Han Chong saying it directly, Xiang Ming knew that only the palace master herself could have given such an order. Grand Elder Shangjin said flatly, Even now, you think you can rely on your father's paltry authority to resolve your problems? Juvenile. With that, he waved, and the Hall of Punishments enforcers filed out and led Xiang Ming and the others away. Xiang Ming slumped in dejection, but although he was incomparably furious and angry, he dared not struggle or resist. Before long, he was let out of the Hall of Punishment. If he's clever, he'll understand. Since even Wang Jianchong was punished, it's clear who the ultimate victor of today's struggle was, said Han Chong, his expression complicated. The depths of Shang Jin's turbid eyes flashed with a strange light as well. How many years had it been? Their palace master was like a deity. This was the first time he'd ever seen her. Back down. Chapter 189, The River of Stars Falls to Earth The house of waves swept rocks. When the carriage stopped outside, Jin Muyao was just about to follow Su Yi in when she heard him say, You should go home. Oh. Jin Muyao batted her eyes, then pleaded, Uncle Su, I want to go to your house and have a look around. But it was as if Su Yi didn't even hear her. Go back and ask around for me. I want to know whether or not Zhu Guqing has made it back to Heaven's Origin Academy. On his way back, he wondered, why was it that despite the commotion, Zhu Guqing didn't make an appearance? She's Wen Ling Zhao's master. Even Wen Ling Xue was nowhere to be found. Something wasn't quite right here. Remember, when he first left the Cloud River Prefectural Capital, Zhu Guqing and Wen Ling Xue had already boarded their passenger ship and left. Based on the distance, they ought to have arrived in the Imperatorial Provincial Capital three days later. Which was to say that they should have arrived the day before yesterday. But today, during his trip to Heaven's Origin Academy, he saw no sign of either one of them. Xu Guqing? Uncle Su, don't tell me you've taken a shine to that mature, icy beauty? Jing Liao couldn't help but ask. Su Yi stretched out his finger and poked her forehead. What do you spend all your time thinking about? Investigate, then come back tonight and tell me what you've learned. With that, he turned and walked into the house of wave-swept rocks. What's the point of being young if you don't live it up a little? Uncle Su, you're so young, and you already have a peerless beauty like Cha Jin by your side. Now you want me to investigate Zhu Guqing too? How could you possibly be up to any good? Jing Liao thought to herself. She turned and went back to the carriage. Uncle Liao, we're going home. This sultry, fiery beauty in black now occupied Su Yi's former seat. She sprawled out lazily, just as he had. However, she felt rather stifled. On their way back from Heaven's Origin Academy, she relentlessly peppered Su Yi with questions in an attempt to find out what happened after Ning Sihua arrived as well as how exactly Sui made it out. Alas, Sui refused to utter a word. It doesn't matter. What happened today was scary enough already. I'll go back and tell my father what I do know, and see what he says. Xing Liao said to herself. The 
the house of wave-swept rocks. Cha Jin's dark hair was tied up in a bun and held in place with a wooden hairpin, revealing her long, snowy neck. Her sleeves were rolled up, so her ivory forearms were on full display as she tended to the lush vegetation growing on both sides of the pavilion. Today, she wore a white skirt that went just past her knees. When she bent at the waist, her slender back and straight, smooth thighs created an enticing, graceful outline. Below the waist but above the legs, her skirts created a particularly ample and abundant curve. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a voice rang out behind her. Is there any food left? Cha Jin shook, then whipped around, scissors in hand. When she saw it was Su Yi, she sheepishly stuck out her tongue. So, you're back, young lord. Su Yi was already walking toward the pavilion. Cha Jin hurried after him. Young lord, I've already prepared a meal from the Five Flavor House, as well as a fine ten-year brew. Would you like me to warm it up for you? No need, said Su Yi offhandedly. I'm going to go cultivate. If anyone comes calling, turn them away at the door, no matter who they are. Cha Jin nodded. All right. Suddenly, Su Yi turned and asked, where did you buy those clothes? Ah. Uh, this question caught Cha Jin off guard. For Su Yi to ask something so strange left her dumbstruck, and it took her a moment to recover enough to say, I bought this in the city, at Rui Fu House. Inwardly, she muttered to herself, why would the young lord suddenly concern himself with that? Don't tell me. She suddenly recalled that Su Yi arrived without her knowing it while she was pruning the trees and flowers. He'd been standing there behind her as she bent forward. Cha Jin's pretty face flushed red, and her heart filled with indescribable embarrassment. No way. Don't tell my skirt is so form-fitting that he saw. Su Yi turned around. Find some spare time to go buy some more. Hmm, you've seen Ling Xue before. Buy something that'll suit her figure. Before he even finished speaking, Su Yi turned and walked toward the pavilion's second floor. Just moments ago, Cha Jin had been bashful, and her thoughts ran wild. But now, she felt as if she'd taken a knife to the heart, and she stood there in a daze. He's making me buy clothes for another woman? And the woman in question is his little sister-in-law. You! How can you act like that? Don't you think that's too much? Cha Jin's expression changed erratically. She still didn't know that today, Su Yi had officially ended things with Wen Ling Zhao. If she knew, perhaps she might understand a little. After eating, Su Yi sat cross-legged, calmed his heart, and began his cultivation. During his clash with Ning Sihua, he suddenly realized a certain something. The great show was part of the mundane world, but that didn't mean there weren't any exceptional or powerful figures living there. Take Ning Sihua, the palace head of Heaven's Origin Academy. It was obvious at a glance that she wasn't a martial artist in the common sense of the word. Even those experts the people called earthly immortals couldn't possibly rejuvenate their youth as she had. Furthermore, Ming Sihua understood the secrets of spiritual awakening of the acupoints, and she called him fellow Taoist. It was obvious that she'd picked up various hints from him too. All of this was enough to prove that Ning Sihua wasn't simple. The Azure continent contained over a hundred nations. The Great Zhou was just one of them, and it merely reigned over one tiny corner of the continent. Thinking about it, it wasn't possible that Ning Sihua was the only special or mysterious figure out there. But that's what makes things interesting. Without people like her, the mundane world would be far too dull. Sui muttered to himself. Two hours later. Crack! The tier 3 spirit stone Sui had clutched in his palm shattered into powder. He thought for a moment, then took out another. After slaying the Wheel of the Moon Sex Lu Hongqi, he now had 10 additional Tier 3 Spirit Stones. How could he possibly refrain from using them? Perhaps because he'd finally freed himself from the fetters of his marriage contract. 
or perhaps because his encounter with Ming Sihua had stimulated him Su Yi already felt it necessary to increase his cultivation. For an existence on his level, so long as he had ample cultivation resources, raising his cultivation wasn't hard. The key issue was that he wanted to create foundations in the Grand Dao that far surpassed those of his previous life. Take the mid-stage Qi accumulation realm, opening meridians. To others, opening and connecting all 12 spiritual meridians required who knows how much time, energy, and resources. But Sui excavated all 12 a long time ago, as he stepped into the middle stages of the Qi accumulation realm. His energy flowed through his entire body, circulating over and over through his 108 spiritual apertures and 12 fully open spiritual meridians, creating an abstruse and uninterrupted cycle. Opening all 12 spiritual meridians, one by one, was like creating a bridge linking a martial artist with heaven and earth. In a sense, the martial artist's body was like a bridge. It connected them to all of creation, and when they cultivated, they could obtain a greater degree of spiritual energy. But to Su Yi, his current attainments in the opening meridian stage were still lacking something, his hidden meridian. The hidden meridian connected a martial artist's bodily shell and soul. It traveled above the twelve spiritual meridians, and only those who achieved full spiritual awakening of the acupoints could sense it. Over the past few days, when Sui cultivated, he really could sense that invisible hidden meridian, like an intangible bridge between his body and soul. However, whenever he tried to condense it, it seemed vague and indistinct. Try as he might, he just couldn't step over the threshold. As such, to the current Sui, the only hard part about increasing his cultivation was resolving the problem of condensing the invisible hidden meridian. Just like spiritual awakening of the acupoints, I'm afraid condensing my hidden meridian will require a lucky break. The easiest place to find a lucky break was in the middle of a life or death battle. However, that didn't mean you could only find them in combat. Sui thought back to his past life's 108,000 years of cultivation experience. He could think of well over a hundred potential methods to break through this bottleneck. But in the end, he rejected all of them. Instead, he decided to search for his lucky break within himself. Or rather, within the Sword of the Nine Hells. Sui naturally hadn't forgotten what happened when he achieved spiritual awakening of the acupoints. He called upon the Sword of the Nine Hells, and its power nourished him, bringing his already firm foundations in the early stages of Qi accumulation up yet another level. And the hidden meridian connected the flesh and the soul, while the Sword of the Nine Hells had always occupied his soul. He could take advantage of that. If I use the pine and crane body refining technique to guide my breathing and circulate my cultivation base, plus the universal self-embodiment sutra to support me from within my soul, the two can work together. That way, as I condense my hidden meridian, I can summon a trace of the Sword of the Nine Hells power. He pondered for a long time, running numerous mental simulations to ensure that whatever danger he encountered wouldn't be fatal. Once he finished his process, Sui didn't hesitate to put his plan into action. When you walk the path of cultivation, you could never be absolutely certain of anything. If he wanted to obtain the highest Grand Dao, if he wanted greater strength than in his past life, he'd encounter risks he couldn't predict based on his past experiences with each step he took. Sui had long since prepared himself for this. Time slipped by. Outside the windows, the skies gradually darkened as night set in. I wonder what the young lord wants to eat tonight. Cha Ching gathered up her skirts and sat on the stone stool before the flower racks. As her ample behind pressed against the edges of the stool, it created a bulge of soft flesh. She held her chin in one hand and stared off into the sunset with eyes like autumn waters. Her mind wandered for a while, until suddenly, she was stunned. An unbelievable scene was now reflected in her pupils. Countless fine streaks of flowing radiance appeared against the deep darkness of the impending night, a colorful display. It was subtle, and the night was dark. 
If you didn't look closely, it was extremely hard to notice. What is that? Cha Jean silently sat up, and her beautiful eyes widened. Find the original at Heaven's Origin Academy. Atop the highest peak of Mount Autumnleaf, a petite figure suddenly shot out of the palace of withering and growth. She wore a long white skirt patterned with clouds, and her face was as immature as an adolescence. The winds howled over the mountaintop, and her clothes danced madly in the gales. The mysterious palace master suddenly raised her head, her eyes glowed like golden twin moons. She saw it too, she didn't know when they'd appeared, but there were now countless, densely packed stars glittering within the deep darkness of the night skies. They flashed, their one minute, gone the next, circulating and gathering together and forming a river of stars so vast, it was beyond imagining. Then, the head and tail of the river of stars connected, forming a circle, which slowly revolved. It was like an incomparably enormous celestial whirlpool beyond the heavens, vast beyond the limits of imagination. Afterward, countless seemingly illusory, mysterious streaks of flowing light flew from the depths of the celestial whirlpool, raining down from beyond the heavens. As if the light of the galaxy were falling from the night heavens, this was an unbelievable, unprecedented phenomenon. Even Ning Sihua felt her heart shake, and she felt dazed, tiny, and insignificant. What person could possibly have triggered such a peerless phenomenon during their cultivation?